Sit down, Herr von Leiden. I am von Schiffer. I run the Gestapo here. This is uh, Captain Müller, the naval officer in charge. We've heard much about you, Herr von Leiden. We've heard much about you, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> your first name is Jab. Married. Your wife's Elaine. One son, Willem, aged nine. Right? Right. You are the chief engineer of the shipyard. You own a substantial amount of shares in it. So, have you been active in politics in any way, Herr von Leiden? No. You were in France last summer and in Switzerland in December. Now, what was the purpose of your journeys? Just holidays. <laughs> I see. And what was your... Uh, association with the Dutch government. We have some contracts in the yard here. About these contracts, Herr von Leiden, what were you building in your yard just before the occupation? Two submarines, apart from small craft. And how far had you got with the submarines? We've got the plating up. To be precise, your scheduled delivery dates were the first submarine a month from now and the second submarine two months later. Is that right? Those are the dates. We are very anxious to get your yard working again. And we were wondering if you would agree to cooperate with us. We are taking over the yard, of course. But we are quite willing to leave it in your charge, if you want to be in charge. I don't know. <sighs> there is no need to give us your answer now, Herr von Leiden. Think it over. Take your time. Let us have your answer at four o'clock.
now, children, who can tell me something about Pete Hine? But we know something, don't we? He captured the Silver Fleet. Remember? Yes. His name was Peter Peterson Hine of Delftshaven. He lived more than 300 years ago, during the most difficult days in all our country's history. When Holland was in danger and everything seemed lost, he did something which aroused our people from despair and gave them new hope. He beat the mighty Spanish Armada and captured the Silver Fleet, which was bringing treasure to the King of Spain. Treasure which enabled us to go on fighting and to win our freedom. He died an admiral of Holland. And this Pete Hine was a very little man, not much bigger than some of you. But when our country is in danger, it doesn't count how big we are. What counts is to love our country and be brave. And no matter what happens, you must never, never give up. Pete Hine never gave up either. And in the end, he captured the Silver Fleet. That's all, children. I didn't know they gave you singing lessons at school. That wasn't a singing lesson. The teacher just wanted us to sing Pete Hines' song. Oh, I see. She said we might have a new teacher soon. Do you think so, Daddy? Well, who knows? Lots of things are going to be different now, you know. That's funny. That's what she said. Oh, did she? I thought you were listening. Well, I was. Did you like what she said about Pete Hine? I was just thinking about it. Shipper, could you run your special police without men? How in heaven's name do you expect me to operate a shipyard without hands? Uh, not in heaven's name, but possibly in Himmler's. Has Himmler helped to stoke my boilers? I had to call in naval ratings to do that. <laughs> and I might have saved the coal. Can't you do anything for Leiden? I'm an engineer, not a magician. Then I must be. Let's hope so. Have you heard from Margaret? The protector. <laughs> that, my friend, is a masterpiece of understatement. When he starts to do the conjuring, some of us might find ourselves vanishing. <laughs> Don't worry, my friend. You will get all the men you need. How? Through their bellies. I'll hang their food baskets so high they'll have to stretch their necks to reach it. Charming idea. <laughs> want to eat, Father. You might remember there's some that do. Now, don't talk about your big ideas. They're not things you can get your teeth into. You've got to work. Not for the Nazis, Jenny. You know my reasons. And you know mine. There they are, all three of them. Oh, food bought that way and choked them. Don't you believe it, Father. Kids don't choke so easily. Jenny, those are your mother's things. Yes. And those are mother's babies. Where are you going? I'm going to do what mother would have done. Turn them into milk and bread. Labor cut? My father isn't in work just now. Then this can't be renewed. But there are five of us. We must buy food. No work cart, no food cart. That's a regulation. But... Next, please. <laughs> Yeah. 
Well, that's the end. So we got you in at last. Where do I start? Same job as before. I thought you were going to be one of those flaming heroes as a stay out. Huh? Even flaming heroes have to eat. You're not the only one to find that out. something on the glass. Some, some writing. Let me have a look. Come with me. That's enough going through now. Mrs. Van Leiden. I'd like some coffee, please. No coffee. Oh, uh, and I want some eggs. No eggs. What do you call those? Well, they're uh, reserved. But I have my ration card. I'm very sorry, Mrs. Van Leiden. I can't help you. Next. Mrs. Van Leiden, please take some of mine. I've plenty. No, no, Yanni. It's quite all right, really. If you're a wise girl, you'll let quizlings shift for themselves. Tell her to go to the Nazis. They won't let her starve. Oh, Bertha, not again. Yes, again. Only one letter now, but everybody knows it means quizzling, so they can save their paint. It hasn't been a very successful morning, I'm afraid. I think I've been to every shop in town. Well, you might have saved yourself the trouble. This can't be for us. It's for you, all right. A Nazi brought it in a car. He said there was nothing to pay. But next time, you'd have to send a proper order to the right food commissar. I won't have it. I'd rather go without. And so we shall, if we depend on that. No, Mum. We keep them. Where are you, Bella? What is it, darling? You're a little horror. Did you hurt yourself? It doesn't hurt. You've been fighting again, haven't you? Yeah. And your father's going to be very cross with you. Is he home yet? No, not yet. Is it true my father's a quizzling? Of course not, darling. <laughs> Whatever made you think of such a thing? Did the other boys call him a quizzly? Yes. And that's why you had to fight. I said I'd punch anyone on the nose who called my father a quizzling. And you did it, too. Not all of them. There were too many.
these officers are in charge of the main departments here. Nominally, of course, they work under the direction of von Leiden. Is that necessary? For the present, I think so, Herr Admiral. Naturally, he has special knowledge of these ships. He is quite a good man, really. Almost a genius in some ways. Where is this genius? Now, here is von Leiden. This is a surprise. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Will you, will you come into my office? You're teaching us how to build submarines, I hear. I'd hardly say that. Clean-looking ship. Any really new ideas? Well, one or two things we're rather keen on. You have quite a yard here. It's not bad. I'm surprised to see such modern methods. We've got past the stage of windmills, Admiral. <laughs> You're quite a practical man yourself, I see. My great-great-grandfather started the shipyards here. I went through it as a boy. How interesting. At any rate, we owe a great deal to your collaboration. But you won't regret it. I saw the protector before I left Amsterdam. Herr Markgraf asked me to convey to you his personal appreciation. Oh, thank you. Will you have a drink, sir? You're very kind. What will you drink, gentlemen? Schnapps. No. Captain Muller tells me you're sending 107 out on her sea trials tomorrow. Tomorrow? First I heard of it. You remember, Captain, it was decided not to make anything public beforehand. Does the foreman know about this? This information is only for you, Herr von Leiden. Oh, I see. Herr Admiral, it is the wish of the Gestapo that no one in the yard shall be informed until tomorrow morning. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Hitler. 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 Raus! Raus! Raus. Come in. Anything fresh? It's come. Pass the word round to everyone. Those with guns to dig them up and bring them to the proper place at nine. And be quick about it. There's a Nazi top just arrived and they'll be trotting him round the yard. Right. The big day. Johan? Yes, Uncle? Get the shutters down and keep your eyes open. So things begin to move? Yes, and so do we. The boat goes out tomorrow. I had the word from him this morning. Are you sure he's right? I'd stake my neck on it. We all do. We must. No errors and no arguments. And what Pete Hines says goes. Have you had time to warn the others? They'll be coming in here to leave their guns with you. Seven guns. And we'll want grub for our twelve. You'll get the order for that tomorrow, after the instructions for the trials have been given out. Meanwhile, we're not supposed to know. Hmm. How do you know they'll agree to the men you've chosen? Well, that's always been the same. Three foremen go from the yard and they're allowed to pick their own men. I see. And the guns? It's up to you to hide them in the food in your own way. Here's mine. Oh, it's you. Oh. Drop it in there. Eh? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yours too. Look out. Bad smell coming. Take great care of it, Cornelis. Hi, right, Hitler. Hi, Hitler. Hi, Hitler. You got my bit of sausage? Oh, yes, yes, it's just coming. I'll get it for you. Here you are, Herr Inspector, uh, with my compliments. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Pretty close in here. For the moment, I thought... It's all right. Put your contribution to the ration box in there. Oh, well, you can't stay here. Come into the back room and have something warm. Good. I could do with a drop of your snaps. God knows when we drink again together. Oh, come in, Johan. Uh, no, I mean, not yet. I've one or two things to do here. Oh, you work hard. Come and enjoy yourself, my boy. Thank you, Uncle. I've just finished cleaning up. My name's Smith, sir. Johannes Smith from the yard. What do you want? 
I've got some information. Important information. Information about what? What's it got to do with me? About the ship. The 107. About her going on trials tomorrow. Come inside. What is it, Sharp? Is anything the matter? It's all right, dear. It's someone from the yard. Oh. Sorry, darling. Who told you the trials of the 107 were tomorrow morning? My uncle, sir. He's Cornelius Smith, the grocer. Well, he should have kept his mouth shut. This is a secret man. He'll get into trouble for this. Yes, I know, sir, but he couldn't keep the secret from me. I live with him. And as for trouble, a lot of people are in for bigger trouble than that. What people? Certain parties who are conspiring to pinch the 107. What? Who? They're the names. This is nonsense, man. Somebody's been pulling your leg. The 70 German sailors on board this submarine, what can 12 unarmed men do against them? But they won't be unarmed. That's where my uncle comes into it. He's supposed to smuggle the arms aboard in the food boxes. Then they're going to fake an accident in the torpedo room, call all the officers and knock them in there. That's the whole plot. They've been rehearsing it for days. I've seen them with my own eyes. Who's the leader of this gang? Yes, Mertens. But it isn't in behind it all. Who is behind it all? Well, nobody knows. But I do know Yost gets orders from somebody who signs himself P.H. And P.H. means Pete Hine. Pete Hine? Hmm. They'd do anything for him, sir. Have you told anybody else about this? Oh, no, sir. No, I brought it straight to you. I knew you'd be the best person for me to come to. Clever man, Schmidt. Oh, thank you, sir. Hmm. Let's see. What are we going to do with you? You know too much, don't you? Too much? Huh. Well, I mean, you're in a dangerous position. Supposing these men found out that you'd been here. What did they do? Well, they don't know anything, sir. And you could round them all up, quick, if you move fast. They're all at the shop now. Are they? Yes, we'll have to try and do better than that. Catch them red-handed if we can. Your uncle is going to get into trouble, isn't he? Pity about his shop, a nice shop. Unless you are interested in the inheritance. Well, as a matter of fact, I am, sir. I'll make a note of that. We'll have a drink of it. Smith, swallow this up quickly. Now, listen to me, my lad. I want you to go straight back now. What? Back to the shop? But aren't you going to... Not tonight. We must catch them in the act. I'm going to intercept those food boxes, just as your uncle's trying to smuggle them into the yard tomorrow. The important thing is they mustn't suspect anything. And they will if you don't go straight back. No, I don't like to do that, sir. No, naturally, but I'm afraid you must. Your uncle's worked 30 years for that shop. It isn't too much to ask you to work one night for it. No, but I thought that if... Now, you listen to me, my lad. You get back before they miss you. Oh, all right, sir. Your health, sir. Yes, it's your health I'm thinking about tonight. Don't move. Straight back to the others. Yes, sir. Good night, sir. Good night.
<laughs> well, still here, your heart? Yes, Uncle. I thought I'd just finished this. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Cornelius. Good night, Jesus. See you in the morning. Yes, yes. <laughs> Good night. Johan. Yes, Uncle? Hello, what's this? You've been out. No, I haven't. Where have you been, Johan? Uh, I don't know what you mean. Don't you? You've been up to something. Come on, talk, you little rat! Damn you, you... Boots off. Round by the bridge, you two, and head him off. No time to blab. Yes, he's here. He'll tell you himself. Dirk. Hey? Well, I'm no fortune teller. I don't know any more than you do. No, the grub box hasn't come yet. And don't phone me. They've got the box. What? I was stopped at the gate and taken to the office. Then how'd you get here? Oh, they didn't want me. They just took the box. Then he did squeal after all. Maybe it's just a routine search. Well, you better get outside quick while the going yes, is good. All right. Whatever happens, they'll find the guns. Oh, shut up. Let me think. Get Dirk on the phone, quick. This is Central Control. The foreman, Joost Mertens, Dirk Van Houten, Joost Sloyce, to report to Mr. Van Leyden's office. The foreman, Joost Mertens, Dirk Van Houten, Joost Sloyce, to report to Mr. Van Leyden. I expect you've realized the diving trials are taking place today. You'll be in charge of the party from the shipyards, Matthians. Very good, sir. Have you decided which men you're taking with you from your department? Yes, sir, I have. Who are they? Good morning. Good morning. Well, who are they? The usual party, sir. I want the names. Well, come on, man, speak up. Klaus Pieper, Kobus Tabert, Lane van Kempen. And who's in your party? Kees de Haas, Gerrit van Delton, Koos Fischer. And yours? Tom de Hoort, Dennis Merlemans, Chris de Leo. I see. Just wait outside a moment, will you? No, this way. I expect you'll want to check up on these names, Von Schiffer. Do I? Well, it's rather an important precaution, isn't it? I don't want to interfere with no, your please job. Please don't. They go on board immediately, do they not? Yes, they do. Well, how do you expect me to, to check up on them now? Well, if you'd let the foreman submit the names yesterday, you might have had time to check up. I'm telling you again that the precaution I prefer is that the time of the trial should not be made known until the last minute. After all, 
What can 12 miserable Dutchmen do against a German cross 70? Don't be ridiculous, Herr von Leiden. Last thing I want is to be ridiculous, Colonel von Schubert. You know your own business best. You certainly do. Come in, will you? It is understood that you three are vouching for your men with your own heads. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You will need this to get your men on board. That is all. The simplest precautions are always the best. We should not try to complicate things, von Leiden. about giving me one. You've got yours coming to you. Number one. Yes, sir. I'm going to have my lunch now. Will you take the periscope? There she goes, sir. There she goes. Strong looking man. Come on, give us a hand. Oh, yes. Oh! 
Leutnant. Accident in the torpedo room. Anyone hurt? Leg broken. Well, uh, tell the captain. He's in the water room. Yes, Herr Leutnant. Uh, hang on, then. What happened? The crane broke. Oh, no, that's not my fault. Hey, you. Don't move. Keep her going as she is. Then I'll shoot the first man that starts any funny business. Take him up. You've got some Achtung. Now keep them covered. I'll be back in a minute. All right. It's a pushover. Well then, shove him out of the way. Right. You all right? No, I'm fine. Want the help? No, I can manage. Now listen, you lot. You're going on a little trip. Do as you're told, and you won't get hurt. Do you think a few lousy Dutchmen can run the ship? Here, lock him up in the heads. I take it out of twenty meters. Come on. This is for twenty meters. Course 260. Okay, 260. All right, as she goes for England. This evening we have news of special interest to our compatriots in Holland. We are proud to announce the arrival at a port in England of a submarine which only 12 hours ago was in the hands of the German Navy. But for the courage of a few brave men, this beautiful new ship, designed and built by Dutchmen, would have been used by our enemies against us. How she was snatched from them and sailed to England will go down in history as one of the most audacious ventures of the war. With this splendid addition to the Royal Dutch Navy lying safely at her English moorings, we now bring to you the voices of some of the men who brought her here. No names, of course. Here is one of the leaders of the party. Uh, well, there's not much I can say. Except that we all knew Pete Heine fixed everything for us. We could never have pulled it off without him. And who do you think it turned out to be? Nobody else but... Shut up. Although it will disappoint our Gestapo friends who will undoubtedly be listening, we must defer the answer to the intriguing question, who is Pete Hine? Try the last part again. Slower. I can say... Except that we all knew Pete Hine had fixed everything. We all knew Pete Hine had fixed everything for us. We could never still deny it, it is your him. husband's voice. Who do you think it turned out to be? Nobody else. Do you like sweeties? Oh yes. Thank you. And does uh, Pete Hine give you sweeties? No. But you uh, you see him sometimes, don't you? Yes. At your house? Yes. When did you see him last? I saw him yesterday. And what's he like? He's not very big. He's got brown hair and brown eyes. And whiskers. Whiskers. Oh, yes. And uh, what else? And a long curly tail. A little brat's talking about a dog. Schimmel, Donnerwetter, and noch einmal. <laughs> No one regrets the necessity for this more than I do, Admiral. I regret also that Captain Schneider's arrival here to take charge of the base should have been marred by a complication of this kind. But it is merely a precaution. The people have been warned. And if they choose to disregard that warning? Then we sign this document and put it into execution immediately. Uh, you mean I sign it? Naturally. It is a matter for the Dutch authorities. You are their chief of police. I have neither the desire nor the jurisdiction oh, to Oh, let it. us be legal at all costs. We are always legal, Herr Reuter. Herr Margaret himself has told us we should do everything we can to emulate our Führer. Throughout his great work for humanity, he has not committed one single illegal act. You would do well to remember that, Herr Reuter. Legal or illegal, I don't like it. Let me see that list. 
Carl Buran, riveter. Bastian Peters, welder. Hans Stoffel, joiner. Hmm, just as I thought. By half your hostages are shipyard men. What do you expect? It is a shipyard town. It won't do, von Schipper. I've got to keep that yard at work. And I have got to keep order. Gentlemen, gentlemen, may I suggest for Captain Schneider's sake? Why bring me into it? I'm only the base commander. Right, I is right, of course. <laughs> I assure you, gentlemen, this difficulty arises solely because of the situation left by your unfortunate predecessors. Unfortunate is right. Believe me, gentlemen, I am not without experience in these matters. And remember, this is still only a threat. But you are determined to carry it out. That determination is the best assurance that we will not have to do so. A warning was posted today at noon, nine hours ago. For nine hours, not one single act of violence has been reported. I am quite confident... Looks like the gas works. It is the gas works. Get out of my way. Hello. Winkelmeyer. Shut up, I'm trying to get you. Get out there, throw a cordon around the place. I will join you later. Vass, I have something to do here first. So you're going to do it? I must. You are right there, you know what to do. You have nothing to be afraid of. Haven't I? It isn't you, they'll tear to pieces. Ah, you have your police force to protect you? That's what I'm worrying about. Sign it, man, and have done with it. You understand, von Schiffer, this is your responsibility entirely. You think I'm doing this from choice? If we climb down now, we are finished. Every Dutchman in that town will laugh his head off. Pete Hyde is at the bottom of this. In Holland, there'll always be a Pete Hyde. If I could get my hands around him, I would... You'd make a martyr of him, just as you would these hostages of yours. Make him all the more dangerous. Might I have a... No? What are you talking about? I'd like to tell you a little story. Oh, hey, God, not I know. Once there was a lion, king of all the beasts. He went out into the jungle to hunt. After he'd been gone many days and not returned, the beasts, presuming him dead, gathered together to do homage to his memory and appoint a successor. In the middle of the ceremony, the lion returned. Unfortunately, he'd been caught in a trap from which he'd only escaped to the loss of his tail. What's all the fuss, said the lion. The animals, amazed to see their king again, stopped crying. But when they saw that he'd lost his tail, they all burst out laughing. And we are supposed to laugh too? No, my friend, it's they that laugh at you. What a fool he looks, they all cried. And furious with themselves for wasting their adulation on so ridiculous a figure, they set upon the lion and tore him to pieces. <laughs> with some water, Yanni. I'm filthy. Come on, get on with your tea. I'll be with you in a minute. There we are. <laughs> Here you are, Daddy. Ah, that's better. You know, Yanni, it's good to be home again when all you expected was a layer of thick earth. Don't let's even think about that. But perhaps you know now who was right about Mr. Van Leiden. Oh, don't talk to me about that quizzling. Father, how can you say that? You wouldn't be here now but for him. What's the matter with your head? Do you know what he told us before they let us go? Help the Nazis. Repay generosity with goodwill. Generosity, me foot. Kiss and be friends or take a bullet in the guts. Mm, it might have been that blasted Fuhrer talking. to show you something. It's ten o'clock. If you don't go to sleep, I'll show you something. Darling, you come home later every night. Why this everlasting work? For whom and for what? They're pressing us to finish the job. Father! You'll have to talk to Willem. What is it, the school again? Mm. And he's making it an excuse not to drink his milk. Hello, old man. 
Hello, Father. Has there been trouble at school again? But I, I thought we discussed that. I thought we decided school wasn't the place for politics. Yes, Father. And what did we say we'd do at school? Learn. Why? Because if we want to be a Quisling or if we want to be a Pete Hine, we must learn in school. Yes. And haven't we decided that you wouldn't mind what anybody called you until you'd finished your boxing lesson? They didn't call me anything. Oh, that's, that's, that's something. What then? They're celebrating because the submarine was stolen from the Germans and they won't let me join in. Oh, that's bad. That's awful. But we, we don't need them to celebrate, do we? No. Is there any milk left in the jug? Yes, there is. Do you mind if I drink out of this? Not in the least. Well, who are we drinking to? To Pete Hine. <laughs> well, what, what's that for? When you do a toast, I mean, when you drink a toast, everybody must stand up. Oh, yes, of course. You too. Only the person you drink to may sit down. Well, I hope Pete Hine's sitting down now. Who gives the toast? You. Well, to Pete Hine, who stole my submarine. And let him steal the second submarine, too. Hold on, wait a minute. That's impossible. You can't drink to that. I told you the Germans were guarding it day and night. Nothing's impossible for Pete Hine. <laughs> well, drink to that. Right down to the bottom of the glass. Good night, old man. He drank his milk. I wonder how you made him do it. Now, the trouble is, these children's heads are filled with problems even we grown-ups can't solve. Well, are you surprised, Jeff? That's what they hear day and night. We never talk about those things. No, because I never ask you about them. Do you think I wouldn't like to know why you're working for the Germans? You've always stood up for the right, Jeff. Is it right that we should help them build more of these terrible machines to destroy other countries and other people? But what happened when the men refused to work? They starved, then they gave in. It took seven weeks to build the 107. Well, where is the 107? But this other ship, you say yourself, no one can do any harm to it. No, no, I didn't say that. I only said it's guarded day and night and that no Dutchman's allowed to go to sea with her. Not even a quizzling. But if somebody... Couldn't a time bomb be planted in it or something? Shh, darling, that's dangerous talk. You don't want us to be suspected of sabotage. You know what the punishment is for sabotage. I sometimes wonder whether it's better to live as a quizzling or die as a patriot. Ah, who doesn't? Yeah, if we could be happy still, in spite of everything. I don't mind what happens to us, so long as it happens to both of us. I know there's something. You're hiding something. Darling, you've never hidden anything from me before. Why don't you tell me? Why don't you trust me? Darling, we used to have a picture there. Would we have been wise to have kept the Queen's portrait hanging there? I suppose not. We still have the picture, only we've put it away. Yes, I know. And we've the place where it hung, and one day we'll hang it there again. Only just now we can't. You understand? Yes, yeah. By the way, was it you who looked in the drawer in my study? Yes, I wanted to see if you'd still kept the picture. I thought if you had, you couldn't be a real Christian. Look in the drawer every day and see whether it's still there. Really? And trust me. My darling. I was looking for you. I've just had a wonderful idea. Extraordinary. I mean, excellent. But I'll see you later, Bernita. Electrician. What core cable have you got in here? Uh, two core, sir. Well, I want you to change it to four core. Can you manage that? Yes. Uh, we have none on board. We need to draw some from the store. I'll see about that. 
Very we'll get good. started straight away. Right. What is that you're doing? I don't know that wiring has been tested. I'm changing the cable on 507 B, sir. Uh, do you know why? No, sir. Shall I send for the foreman? No. Who ordered that? Mr. Van Leiden, sir. Strength of the art. But you know me, don't you? Sorry, sir. Colonel's order. He's in the guard room. Oh, is he? I'll go and see him. <laughs> What's all this nonsense, Von Schiffer? Why can't I get in the shipyard? Uh, what's up? I broke into the magazine, got away with half a case of TNT. What? That's bad. I won't do it again. Uh, we're moving the lot tomorrow. Then they finish off the sentry too. This man caught a glimpse of someone he knew before they knifed him. We're trying to find out who it was. It's Dutch to me, Colonel. Of course it's Dutch, you fool. Okay, perhaps you can help us. You understand these Dutch names von Leiden. See if you can make out what he says. What? No, st stand back, stand back, everybody. And keep quiet. Come on now, my friend. Who was it? Yes, now, try again a little louder. Yes, he's out. Did you catch the name? No. Well, there's no doubt about it, it was Bastian. Thank heavens I was the only one to catch the name. Bastian, but how could he be so crazy? People don't steal stuff like that for nothing. It's the crazy work he'll do with it that'll cause the trouble. But what can we do? We must find out what they've done with it, try and get it back. But I can't do this alone. I want you to help me. Of course, but how? Well, get on your things, darling. I'll tell you while you're dressing. Every moment's precious. I want you to go at once to Yanni Peters. There's a chance she may know something and she trusts you. Yes, she trusts me. Well, try and get her to tell you something. Yap, you wouldn't. No, good heavens, I would not. What kind of man do you think I am? These people are our own kind, our own blood. Do you think I want to see them put against the wall? About it. If he did, I'd know. But you do know, Yanni. You know you do. I've told you the truth. He'll be home soon, and he'll make a pot of trouble when he finds out you've been here again. Well, then, if he comes, I must speak to him myself. You mustn't. Why do you have to come here, Mrs. Van Leiden? We haven't done you any harm. I don't want to hurt you, Yanni. Can't you see I'm trying to help you? He won't believe that, nor anything from where you come from. Then you must, if we're going to save your father. You mean they know something about him? That's what I'm trying to tell you. They know practically everything. Who's they? Well, my husband. Then we're done for. Young. If he knows so much, why do you want to ask me? Because he doesn't know the one thing that can help. I suppose he wants to find out who the others are, so that he can catch them too. He's not interested in the others, only in what they've stolen. But we must find out where they've hidden it. Why? Because we've got to get it back. My husband says that if we can do that, it'll make things easier. And he's promised not to breathe a word about your father. Why must he get it back? Don't you see? They'll do something dreadful with it, and then it'll be too late. 
It's too late now. What do you mean? They've got it all right and planted it. That I do know because they planned it all here in this room. Plan to do what? Tell me, Yanni. Tell me quickly. Von Schiffer? To the hospital. How is the sentry? Hmm? Well, give it some more. Try anything you like. You must get him conscious for five minutes. Not very much to ask, is it? Hmm? He knows the man who wounded him. Give him a chance to tell us. Hmm? Whether I care if he lives afterwards is not my business. All I'm concerned with is those five minutes. Cramp! Send the man over to the hospital. I want to watch kept on him night and day. The man in the centre, he was hurt. And what does the doctor say? Well, very little hope. All doctors are communists. Could you show me the files on von Leiden? Why, of course, but why? The more I seal that man, why was he trying to get into the yard tonight? Ask him. There's something else I never told you. I came across a change he'd ordered in the 108. An extra circuit and a cable running from the control room. I can't see any purpose in it. Can he explain? I haven't asked him. I don't want him to think I'm suspicious. Uh. Colonel von Schiffer's office. Von Leiden? Hmm. Put him through. Hello, my friend. We were just talking about you. Hmm. Huh? In the shipyard? The Vinica is here. He's on the track of those explosives. You go on ahead, von Leiden. We'll meet you at the gates. Now, shall I come too, huh? Mm, of course. Come! To my car! Neat job, eh, Vernica? Uh, too neat for my liking. Sorry if I hurried you, old man. We'd nearly a minute to spare. Hi, where are you? That'll be Von Schiffer. Give him a call, will you? We're down here! Have a drop more. Ah. It's good stuff, this. <laughs> you know, one of these beastly things would have been enough to blow us all to kingdom come. Uh, how, how many other, Vernica? Perhaps some more cocoa, Vernica. You know, you would have made a thundering fine German, Van Leiden. Now, uh, surely that can't be intended as a compliment. <laughs> Clamp, would you like to finish this up? Thank you, sir. Beware of him, Van Leiden. <laughs> Secretly, he's jealous. You beat him at his own game. You can do that as often as you like. All I want is peace and quiet. <laughs> If those casings had gone up, we should have been standing in the debris of several highly promising careers. <laughs> yeah, not only naval ones this time, eh, Von Schiffer? <laughs> I suppose you realize that you've saved not only an explosion in the shipyard, but some pretty fireworks in Amsterdam. <laughs> if Herr Magraff had... No, 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 my dear fellow, we've had a hard night. Don't harrow us with these grisly possibilities. Well, may I suggest that we do not harrow the protector with them either? 
And it's, of course, for night you feel that... No, no, no. Uh, Mum's the word, as far as I'm concerned. It is very generous of you. More generous than he knows. Uh, shall we tell him? Why not? Why, what's the joke? It must sound absurd to you, von Leiden. But for some time now, we've had our doubts about you. About me? Really? You know how it is. So, so, so many things have happened. Uh, thefts, piracy, sabotage and so on. Uh, well, in the end, one begins to, to trust no one. Tell me, von Leiden, uh, what would you say if uh, we asked you to come out on the trials? I'd say it's the first time common sense suggestion I've heard from you gentlemen for a considerable time. <laughs> Precautions are all very well, but there must be a limit to them. Obviously, someone who understands the ship must be aboard. <laughs> My dear fellow, why on earth didn't you say so before? Well, I can hear you saying to Wernicke, why is this Van Leyden so keen about these trials? On the contrary. <laughs> I'd have said there was no better way to guarantee the safety of the ship. Von Schiffer. Captain Heineke, Mrs. Bremer, Mrs. Schneider. And the Admiral next to you, dear. Good. What is good about it? Darling, why must we invite them to our house? People we used to know are starving and we're giving a dinner party. How much further must we humiliate ourselves, Yarp? But the food's requisitioned. If it wasn't here, it'd be at the Admiral's or Von Schiffer's. And I would prefer it, wouldn't you? Not tonight. What is so special about tonight? Tonight? Nothing. It's a night like other nights. But tomorrow morning, the 108 sails on her trials. All the more reason you should have a good night's rest. I'll rest when the trials are over. and by the thousand, that is the secret of victory. And that is my job, building thousands of aerodromes, underground, overground. And I've even got a plan for, well, a different kind of runway altogether. Yeah. You know how many aerodromes I've constructed already? No. 204. <laughs> and this one outside Scripps Dam is the 205th. Soon the first aircraft will be taking off, and I assure you, there's no bigger thrill in life if you are an engineer. Obviously, Herr Burma, you've never been in a submarine. No, never. Each cock crows in his own yard, you know. By the way, it must be quite a thrill when you die. Oh, it is. You should try it. One day I will, if you ask me. My dear, th why not come with us tomorrow? Trials of our new ship. You can hold von Schiffer's hand. Schiffer's coming with you? Certainly. Are you an early bird? What do you call early? Oh, Five-ish. Oh, that's not so bad at this time of year. I promise you a real thrill. Done. Do I bring sandwiches? No, oh, no. Don't bother, old boy. Darling? Oh, excuse me one minute. All right, Bertha, I'll answer. It'll be the Admiral and Von Schiffer. Get two more cups. I'm afraid you've missed your dinner, gentlemen. We have brought a guest with us, whom you will be proud to have under your roof. Herr Ludwig Markgraf, Herr von Leiden. Herr Hitler. This is an honor. Herr Markgraf. I'm glad to meet you, Herr von Leiden. I apologize for detaining two of your guests. Well, better late than never. <laughs> I still can't believe it's you, Your Excellency. This night of all nights. I'm overwhelmed. Helene, just see who's here, the most important man in Holland. I introduce my wife, Herr Markgraf. How do you do? It is a pleasure to meet Frau von Leiden. Good evening, Admiral. Good evening. You'll have some coffee. Delighted. Herr Markgraf, may I introduce... Mrs. Berman? Hello, Von Schiffer. I've got news. You know that sentry who got injured the other night? Yes. He regained consciousness just for a few moments. We have the name. What name? The man who did it, of course. One of my men kept watch by that sentry's bed for four days, just in case he should speak. Well, that was very clever of you, Von Schiffer. How is he now? Who? Oh, the sentry. 
Oh, he died. Well, don't you want to know the name? Oh, of course. Bastian Peters. But one of my workmen from the yard. You couldn't help that, of course. It's nice work bringing this off just as Herr Margraf was passing through. Yes, but have you got him, Bastian? Matter of minutes now. We're rounding up the whole district now. Yes, well, I hope the arrival of Herr Margraf won't prevent you coming with us on the trials tomorrow. Don't worry, he's off tonight. He's uh, a special train waiting. He sleeps on the move just to save time. What a man. It is a great thing for you, von Leiden, having him here tonight. I appreciate it. <laughs> Darling, there's bad news. Bastian. Oh, no. The sentry's spoken. Oh, yeah. They haven't caught him yet, mind you. Can we warn him? No, no, the district's surrounded. Oh, yeah, but it's my fault. Our fault. I believed you. You said it would help Bastian if I went to Yanni. I'm sorry, darling. Is that all you can say? What does it matter to Bastian and his children whether you're sorry or not? No, no, they not? haven't caught him yet. I promise you, as soon as these people have gone, I'll do something to help Bastian. Trust me, trust me, just a little longer. Keep the party going. Don't let me down. We have arranged for an escort, and of course, air cover. Hello? Von Schiffer speaking. Huh? I knew you would make a mess of it. Will you have the children anyway? That is something. Don't keep asking me for orders. Wake the neighbors, round up all people with curfew passes. One of them must have seen him. Finally, escaped. That's all. I have to do everything myself. But you're not going, I hope. I must. I've got to clear this up tonight, or I won't be coming with you in the morning. Oh, well, in that case, I'll, I'll find your help. You don't mind, my dear Van Rapp. You want to have some more coffee, a drink, a cigar? No, thank you. Sit down. Interesting man, Van Rapp. You know, he was one of our best U-boat commanders in the last war. Are you interested in submarines, Herr Markgraf? Everything interests me. I am interested in everything. You know, for me, everything is connected. You can't isolate things, don't you agree? I do. Your charming wife is worried. How can you let such a charming person worry? You know how women are, Herr Mark Ralph. No, I don't. Tell me. It's the certain problem. We've only one. It's rather inadequate. And she worries about that? In connection with the honor of having you as our guest. Everything is connected. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I suppose the sudden exit of von Schiffer is connected with the fact that he has not caught his man yet. Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't say that. No, of course not. You know it, but you don't want to say it. You are a tactful man, Herr von Leiden. I admire tact. It is a quality that we Germans sometimes lack. Well, you shouldn't deplore that, sir. Indeed. Surely tact makes life much more pleasant. Ah, you're very kind, but I'm not deceived. Do your people allow your lives to be ruled by tact and pleasantness? No. You've traced in fire the mighty outlines of a new world. Do you believe that? One doesn't believe in facts like that, Herr Markgraf. One salutes them. Ours is a little country, sir. A country of little people, with few thoughts beyond their farms and tulip fields, their homes, their families, little pleasures, little loyalties. An unimportant people, Herr Markgraf. Why should we grieve if such things are swept away? I begin to see what makes you such a good collaborator, Herr von Leiden. You have the broad outlook. No, no. Each one of us must search in his own heart, reach his own conclusions, and do his best to carry them out. You and I both do that. However far apart our destinies may seem to lie. It may be those destinies may lie closer than you think. Well, they should do so. I must do my best to bring that affinity about. You know, I've got an idea. Why don't you come with us on our trials tomorrow morning? Oh, no, no, my dear von Leiden. I must return to Amsterdam. What a pity. It was a unique opportunity. Why unique? To see how a Dutch machine behaves in German hands. My dear von Leiden, I am an administrator. I know nothing about submarines. Yes, but you are a great administrator. You don't mind my saying that. Not in the least. Yes. And so, therefore, you'll forgive me if I say that you may have some trouble with us here in Holland. What do you mean by that? Holland is a tiny wheel in the great machine of your axis. The wheel must be in mesh or the machine won't work. Now, we in Holland will perform miracles if we get the right encouragement from the right people. What do you call encouragement? Interest, appreciation. You include me among the right people? Well, who else? 
I'll think about your invitation. You're not only clever at building ships, Herr von Leiden. I can't tell you, sir, how much it means to me to have you here tonight. And now I'll take that cigar. You shall have these cigars, sir. My dear von Rupp, you must get me a suit of overalls. I'm going on the trials of this U-boat of yours. Certainly. You have a most persuasive husband, Frau von Leiden. It's all right. I'm a friend. Shut the door. Why, they'll get me anyhow, just as surely as I'll get you. I'm a dead man already. I'm beginning to like the feeling. Shut the door. You're all right here. We'll talk about dying or living in a moment. In a moment, you'll be dead. Bastian, listen. We've listened to you long enough. If my Yanny hadn't listened to your wife, we wouldn't be in this mess. Here it comes. Bastian, you fool. You can't shoot me. Oh, yes, I can easily, but go on, talk. I've always wanted to see a quizzling, groveling for his filthy life. Think, man, think. Who sent you the message on the glasses telling you not to despair? Who sent you Johannes, the traitor, marked with a cue on the back? Who told you where to find the guns underneath the cedar trees? How to hide them in the food and get them in the ship that sailed away? Pete Hine, but how do you know? I am Pete Hine. Fine lady. But it was you who tipped off the Nazis when we wanted to blow the Kaisen into hell. Oh, small stuff, Bastion, small stuff. No good, no earthly good against them. What good to blow up the Cassian? They'll repair it again. The 108 will still sail. No, oh, it must be done at the right time and at the right depth. I'm after the 108, Bastion, as Pete Hyde was after the Silver Fleet. I've told no one about this. No one in the world. Not even my wife. Turn out the light. How did you get away? Shut my way out. They've traced you here. I'll get you out of this. It's no use. I'm finished. Don't be an idiot. But you've got to think of the job, sir. If they find me here, they'll know you're in it somehow. Think of the 108, sir. Please don't be alarmed. We are looking for a man. We think he has come here. Excellency, will you please leave at once? I've always wanted to do something for Pete Hine. Ah! Bastion! Are you all right? Where is he? He's in there. I've shot him. Wait here. You better search him. First, we should better find out who the others were. You better take this. It's his. <laughs> the near thing. I congratulate you, von Leiden. If ever you are out of a job, there is one waiting for you in the Gestapo. <laughs> Get him out of here. This calls for a celebration, doesn't it, von Leiden? Huh? There'll be no more trouble. You can join your fellows outside, if you like. I have orders to stay here. Oh. How is she, Bertha? You'd better go and see her, Master Yard. Yes, I'm going. Helen. Helen, I want to talk to you. Helen, I, I must tell you something. It's very important. Open the door, please. Open the door. Helen, I must speak to you if you love me. Open the door.
I'll be down in a minute. Explain it now, old man. Your mother will tell you about it in the morning. But be a good chap and don't ask her. All right, if you say so. Are you off now? Yes. On the trials? Yes. You know, you're getting quite a big chap. You'll be able to look after your mother when I'm away. Will you come home tonight? No, I don't think so. And I don't think the other boys will be wanting to fight you anymore. Why not? Because I'm going to do something about it. Are you? That's fine. But I'm not afraid of them, you know. No, of course not. In return, will you do me a favor? It's not medicine. No. <laughs> I want you to give a message to your mother, and I want you to remember it very carefully. Tell her the picture is still in its place. What picture? Oh, it doesn't matter. She'll know. Will you remember? Yes. The picture is still in its place. And she's to look for it. And she's to look for it. That's right. Goodbye, William. Goodbye. Van Laden. Willem Van Laden. shipyard because my men will remember me. As long as Dutchmen live in Holland, I shall be here because I was one of the seeds from which freedom grew again. I shall not die. Does a seed die when it is buried in the earth? Has the wind died when it ceases to blow? Are the waves dead when the sea is calm? The truth is that a nation will only live as long as it has people ready to die. 